Over the past several months, Helga Tsepp LaRouche intervened into the just concluded elections for Chancellor of Germany with a very strong campaign, delivering a series of highly successful webcasts from Berlin, which have already begun to produce international reverberations. In her most recent, September 22nd webcast, Mrs. Tsepp LaRouche dropped a political bombshell when she exposed the hidden history of the crucial influence of the American system of economics on the development of Germany as an industrial nation at the end of the 19th century. In showing that German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who instituted a famous 1877 set of reforms which modernized and helped to unify the German nation, was influenced by the American system of protectionism, in direct opposition to the British system of free trade, Mrs. LaRouche documented a history which is unknown to even most Germans, a true history which most Germans have been indoctrinated today to deny. Bismarck's commitment to the American model of Henry Carey and Abraham Lincoln, which he instituted merely a decade after Lincoln's crushing defeat of Britain's attempted offensive against the United States during the Civil War, enraged the British Empire, and caused the British to commit themselves to the prevention of the rise of Germany as a powerful pro-American system power in Europe ever since. The destruction of Germany under the post-World War I Versailles, the British monarchy's support for Hitler's rise to power, Margaret Thatcher's attempted sabotage of the reunification of Germany after 1989, and the murderous Maastricht Treaty Euro system have all served to place all of continental Europe, Germany included, under the heel of the British imperial boot, a position in which Europe still finds itself today. In a statement issued this morning on the subject of the results of the German elections, Lyndon LaRouche emphasized that the only presently visible hope on the horizon for Europe lies in the prospect of rallying a power block among the nations of the United States, Russia, China, and India to break the world free from the dictatorship of the present London-centered monetarist system and to lead the planet into a, into a newly established credit system based on precisely those principles of the American system of political economy which Bismarck himself identified with. For that reason, we present here an excerpt from Helga Zeppler-Rusch's September 22nd webcast from Berlin. Now, I'm already hearing people screaming and complaining, people who believe in globalization and the free market, or the so-called so free market, because I dare the holy, to, to take the holy coo cow of the central bank and to put that whole central bank in question. But the problem that these people have is that they do not know the German. They do not know German history, because how German be went from a feudal state at the end of the 19th century to a one of the leading industrial nations of the world comes from the American system. Then Bismarck. Then until Bismarck in 1879 uh, brought through his industrial reforms. Germany was basically a feudal state that used the method of the free free trade and supported it. But first, the contact of Bismarck with with the theories from Henry C. Carey, the economic advisor of Lincoln, you had a situation that it was possible to go from a feudal state to an industrial nation. The, the very important was the role of Wilhelm Kardoff. He was a member of the national parliament. He had a relationship to Bleichstreiter, who was a, some, a friend also of, of Bismarck. And together, he founded a bank, Prussian Hypotheken Bank. He founded the, the Central um, uh, Union of Traders. Um, it would be it would be the, the it's one of the it would be the leading uh, industrial um, committees. So Kardoff. Um, he suggested to Bismarck the following thing. Früher war ich auch ganz naiv. 
Uh, I, too, was once very naive, and when I was still in the university studying Adam Smith, Ricardo, and Stuart Mill. When answering exam questions, I thought I knew which financial and trade policies a state should pursue to enable its members to achieve, to an outstanding degree, that mastery over the gratuitous forces of nature on which national wealth, wealth relies. At that time, I was a Manchester man of the first water. I was convinced that it was free trade that gave England its superior wealth. That was my rock-hard opinion. There was a simple rule. Buy, a cheap, buy as cheaply as you can, no matter where and where it comes from, and sell it as dearly as possible, no matter where and to whom it goes. That seemed to me a foolproof means by which to promote peaceful competition among peoples in the production of goods, allowing each country to flourish in a way that is particularly suited to its geographical position, its climate, its land and soil conditions. There are, on the webpage of the Buzo and the New Solidarity, there's a longer article um, about this whole question of Kardoff and Bismarck. And when I was doing this historical research, I read about 20 different biographies of Bismarck. You don't find anything about this, even though it's the most important influence, uh, the next Quote, please. In der Sauna lernte ich einen gebildeten Amerikaner, der mir zu meinem Entsetzen erzählte, die Manchester Freihandelstheorien während der Horrors of Horrors. When I got to know an educated American in the sauna at the spa, who explained to me that Manchester free trade theories were the biggest swindle that had ever been concocted to deceive mankind. We were talking about the American Civil War. Naturally, I had no sympathy for slavery, but I did think that if the North were to win, this would mean the victory of protectionism over free trade policy, and that this would be the, and that this would be bad, to which that American replied that he would not wish for Germany ever to experience what the practical implementation of radical free trade would mean. Then he asked whether I had read Carrie's writings. Carrie? I later let Mr. Siegler from the German Progress Party, who asked me the same question. Are you familiar with Kerry? Kerry was the most, the important economist of President Lincoln. He continued the tradition of Friedrich List. He was the father of the German trade union and had this protectionist system. And he himself was in the United States a little bit uh, for quite a few years and uh, looked at the question of national economy. So he made the differentiation between the British system and the American system. The American system that was based on protectionism, so that first you must have a, uh, a an economy which functions internally and then a domestic market and then uh, then you can go and you, you, otherwise you can't have this system of, of buy cheap, sell dear. That's not going to, otherwise you just have trading between, you'll just have the tradesmen made, uh, make profit. So this is the third quote. Then a friend made the following argument. If free trade theory were correct, then all protectionist countries would be poor and all free trade countries would be rich. A precise examination of the situation in all countries throughout the world shows that just the opposite is the case. The free trade countries are becoming impoverished. All protectionist countries are flourishing. So there must be a miscalculation in the model of free trade theory. The whole system of the Manchester School is based on the fiction that all people of the earth are a common family and have a common interest. A fiction quite similar to the theory of a universal eternal peace. And it is striking that the apostles of the Manchester School are also supporters of the International League or also of Kant's perpetual peace, which is based on the same idea. Kardoff um, made, made his ideas clear in a very nice little cute book. Uh, it means against the uh, against the current, and uh, he looks at the whole question of how the American system, the protection system functions. I myself, um, uh, just, I've just given you a few um, quotes. You, it, it all is about the globalization today.
werden die Leute die, oder die Länder, die sich dem unterworfen haben oder dem unterworfen worden sind, gegen ihren freien Willen. This is all about the countries who have been subjected to uh, the British system. Why should one million people go hungry today? Why are two million billion people uh, thrown into poverty through globalization, whereas a very short, small part of humanity is, is well cared for? It's not possible that a system uh, would help out a few thousand uh, billionaires, a few hundred billionaires, but for a uh, hundred our million um, do not have what they need. And this is the exact same system that uh, Cardoff was polemicizing against. Täglich sehen wir in England die Kluft zwischen großen Kapitalbesitzern und Besitzlosen that every day we see how the um, difference between Wir sehen, wie viele hundert morgen fruchtbaren Landes hier in Gründen und Parks umgewandelt werden. Deshalb we see how parks are being changed into davor bewahren, das Opfer der Handelspolitik zu werden, an welcher England selbst so schwer erkrankt ist. Und stattdessen that England is suffering so much from this, um, so können, from this poverty, and they cannot even take care of themselves. In one of uh, Carrie's writings, which I can recommend to you, he goes into the absolutely crucial questions. This Wilhelm von Cardoff is the one who convinced Bismarck. Bismarck selber hören. But if we listen to Bismarck himself and we look at his own writings, then we come upon quite astounding quotes. In 1828, he had a, a correspondence with Bamberger, who was the father of the Deutsch uh, German market. And who was a counselor of Bismarck's during the German French War but then became a proponent of Manchester capitalism. He said, Bismarck said, I consider the whole free trade policy to be wrong. And this is Bismarck, remember. Please show me two and three. The My politics reicht weiter als bis zu den nächsten Wahlen. My policy goes further, much further than the next elections, because if I had to limit myself to the next elections, I would, I would never have risked going into politics. Our politicians today should listen to this. And then? Ich lerne sehr gerne. Ich lerne auch von I like to learn. Sehr gerne. Ich and I also like to learn from Representative Bamberger. I don't claim that I have learned everything, but that's not where we got our protective tariffs from. We got it from King Frederick the Great in a large degree. We had it in the times of the old uh, customs union. At the time when we had three times higher now uh, customs than now. And now we've tried a totally new experience for the past 15 or 20 years ago, but it did not stand the test because it's brought us very near to starvation and looting. All nations that have productive tariffs have a certain wealth, and even France, which supposedly is suffering, has been suffering for centuries since the time of Colbert from this sickness, we see that it's prospering. Also Bismarck, uh, so Bismarck, through his friendship with, his, uh, with John Lothrop Motley and with George Bancroft, uh, an important American um, historian and later ambassador to Berlin, he learned from them about the economic system in the U.S., about the Civil War, and also about the uh, World Exhibition in 1876 in Philadelphia, where the U.S. was then had the most developed industries in the world. And Bismarck said of this, England had the stärksten Schutzzölle gehabt. England has the strongest protective tariffs until under their protection it becomes so strong that it then came out as a fighter and challenged everyone else, come into the ring with me. It's the strongest fighter in the arena of competition. It will always be ready to accept the law of the strongest in trade, the law of the jungle.
But the law of the jungle is given to us by free trade, and England has, through its capital and through its reserves of iron and coal, and through its ports, become the strongest among the law of the free trade fist fight, but not by its geographic location alone, but by its truly uh, exorbitant protective tariffs against foreign countries until its industry had developed their full strength. Now it's strong enough to be able to say to others, hey, come on, now come to see us and fight with us freely. You won't be stupid enough to sacrifice your money for our products. The magic word freedom is connected as a rallying call to the English superiority. And with this mask, our freedom gushers became immediate to the starvation and looting by foreign trade. For a long time, I had no opportunity to approach this question, and I do not have any more understanding than other people. I had other things to do. I repeated other people's prayers until I was forced by the departure of Mr. Delbruck to uh, look into the issue myself, and I found out that I had been mistaken. But that was not my main concern. I think that most Germans who know or like Bismarck as the uh, founder of Germany are not aware of this aspect of his work. The reason why German industry today has gone over to free trade inside the uh, World Trade Organization, the dough around, and so on. They're giving up the last bits of their sovereignty. And that has to do with the fact that the 500 biggest industries in Germany are taking advantage of it because they're because the middlemen who are controlling trade are exporting products, but they never really understood that the real uh, important things that were really important for Bismarck at the time would make Germany much stronger today, and that is an internal market. And to do that, you have to increase the purchasing power of the population. And it's just as important today as it was then. So the most important thing today, I think, is that we make these positions known among the uh, small and medium enterprises, because without this type of approach, they will be lost. Bismarck understood uh, Great Britain very well and the British Empire, not only in economic policy, but also he understood that the fundamental conflict between the American system and the British system and why the U.S. Uh, achieved economic freedom and political freedom from Great Britain, from England. And he also uh, warned that a new kind of uh, seven years war would come very soon. And then the Anglophile tendency uh, within Germany demanded the departure of Bismarck in 18, the 90s. And sometime after that, the conditions were set for the First World War. And uh, at that time, the um, contracts with Russia and other countries uh, were being undone. At that time, Deutschland had, and still has today, basically no raw materials, but it nevertheless became a leading industry, industrial country, thanks to the Bismarck reforms, which uh, encouraged high rates of economic and technological progress, protectionism, social laws uh, for the um, employers as well as, as employees. And right now, the danger is that we'll lose all of this. Although it's not usual to say this, it's, it's important to draw the lessons from what Bismarck did. 